what is happening people i hope you guys are doing good and more importantly i'm sincerely hoping that you guys are you know preparing very well for your examinations and to aid that preparation guys we are back with the sprint tech series and as you guys might already know what sprint tech is uh, sprint tech is nothing but a series where we'll be doing a lot of questions and time and again the same questions have been repeated in board exams also so make it a point to stay till the end and solve all the questions that is there in today's session so we'll try to solve these questions in the least amount of time possible because again it's not a marathon where you can take uh, any uh, like whatever time you want in the world to complete the race no this is going to be a sprint so you have to be as quick as possible and be, make sure you have your notebooks and pens in front of you because we'll be solving a lot of numericals as well so anyways welcome to the session my name is Anup and I'm a master teacher of physics here at Vedantu I've been teaching for five years now and in that five years I've taught and mentored 10,000 plus students all over the country so that's a little bit about me now if you haven't checked out the first video of Sprintex yet what are you doing now? what are you doing go check it out because guys the questions that were asked in the previous session of sprint text was seriously mind-blowing and all of the questions were from reflection of life so try out every single question of yours and i've got some amazing response for that video as well so make sure you check that out make sure you try out every single question and let me know in the comment section how many questions were you able to get it right from the previous session and this one as well so today also the same funda goes i have three sections i have section a section b and section c section a are very simple very straightforward questions I'm going to call this the Blair round because the questions are like all, trust me, it's all Blair. It's like simple one mark questions. You can do it in your sleep. Section two would be on the other and would be a little bit more difficult. We'll be doing a lot of numericals over there. And trust me, the numericals in today's session are actually going to make you sweat. So I'm going to call that as a sweaty round. In fact, you know what? I'll call it the super sweaty round because uh, it's going to be actually, actually sweaty. The last one would be section C would be basically a, a case study based question. So you'll have, uh, you know, a paragraph. And uh, with that paragraph, you'd be asked about three to four sub questions. And you'll have to answer those sub questions as well. So are you guys ready, people? In the chat box, give me a oh yeah. If you guys are all ready, let's begin today's Sprint X series. So in today's session, guys, these are the kind of topics that we'll be dealing with. Image formation by spherical lenses, uh, lens formula and uh, numericals and magnification and power of a lens. Now, let me tell you this, guys. If in any of these topics you're finding it difficult, you're not able to understand the concepts or maybe uh, you did study it, but you're not, you know, you're not that confident. Do check out the videos of Umang series as well. Uh, that is, you know, we have the entire Prodigy and Umang series going on. Uh, that is Vedanta Ninth in uh, English as well as Hindi channel. You can check out those videos. Trust me, you'll be able to understand every concept from those videos. Here we have the Prodigy series. So make sure you check that in the description itself. You'll be getting that. Check it out. Make sure you try to solve those questions as well. I right, guess I mean, try to go through those topic and then come back and solve these questions. All right. So before we get started, guys, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button because we have an amazing set of things in the pipeline for you guys. So many Sprint Tech series are going on right now as we speak for all the subjects, be it English, be it social science, be it uh, mathematics. I can show you the schedule as well. But before that, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you guys are enjoying the session so far. So yeah. Let's start with a small bit of motivation, right? Because it's important to start the day. Just like how breakfast is important to kickstart the day, motivation is important to kickstart your uh, journey for through the study or to, through this education life as well. So here's a, 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 the quote for today. I am unaffected by the judgment of others. Please don't, because at this point of time, especially at this point of time, guys, you guys very easily get waved around by, uh, you know, what your peers and what your parents and what your uh, relatives have to say about you. Don't do that because trust me, guys, I'll, at the end of the day, you're what matters and you're the only thing. You're the only one who can fight your battles. So please do not let their judgments, their words, their thoughts affect your way of thinking, your judgment or your, uh, you know, approach towards life. Please don't let that happen because, you know, time and again, you can see so many suicides and all happening because of uh, again it's not that uh, they want to right it's just that they're the people around them the kind of people that they surround them with is not uh, what is ideal right so i would suggest you guys to be very very proactive about that choose the kind of people that you want to be with and more importantly don't take their judgment there's no need for you to uh, be judged who are they to judge you who are they 
who are they to judge? So chill out and live your life, right? So anyways, so this is the schedule, guys. So we have light already that came out on 21st of October. Today we'll be coming out with light two. Then we'll have human and colorful world, which will be coming on on 28th of October. And all the three would be at 3 p.m. This is the schedule for mathematics. You have so many sessions. Like I told you guys, subscribe to the channel because there's so many, 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 many sessions coming out for mathematics as well. This is for biology, which will be taken up by Maria Ma'am. Uh, nutrition, respiration, transportation, excretion. We have for chemistry. Uh, our very own uh, Shweta ma'am uh, you'll be having sorry uh, Shilpi ma'am will be having all these sessions from Shilpi ma'am then we have Shweta ma'am with uh, all these uh, English sessions as well so make sure you subscribe to the channel guys because we have a lot of amazing content so make sure you do that as well okay let's not waste any more time oh by the way SST is also there how can I forget Chintu sir once again Chintu sir is right there all right so guys let's begin the last session by the way I'd ask you a simple quiz a simple homework question this was a question basically if velocity of light in air is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second, while its velocity in the medium is 1.5 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second, then what is the refractive index of the medium? Very simple case. Refractive index is represented by the letter N or mu. So refractive index of the medium is speed of light in air divided by the speed of light in that medium. So speed of light in that air, right? Speed of light in air is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 and medium is 1.5 into 10 to the power of 8. Gets cancelled? 2. So the answer is going to be that's it. It is a unitless quantity. Very simple question. This is how you find out the refractive index. So these are the homework rockers, people. We have uh, Shreya, Amisha, Anushka. Super, super, super amazing. Keep up the good work, guys. Keep up the good work. Awesomely well done. And by the way, these are the students who got pretty much all 13 questions right in the previous session. And I, as I promised, I'll, I'll be putting up your names in the next session. So here it is, guys. This is a tribute for you, people. Tanvi, super amazing. 12 questions out of 13. Akriti got 12 out of 13. Hussan got uh, 11 out of 13. Shreya got 12 out of 13. Pradeep got all 13 questions, right? Super awesome, buddy. Rajesh got 13 on 13. Uh, Prince got 12 on 13. Harshit got, Harshi got 13 on 13. Shubham got 13 on 13. And Gaurav OPG also got OP OPY 13 out of 13 as well. So yes, guys, if you want your name to be here in the next session, make sure you put down the answers in the comment section. More importantly, let me know how many questions you were able to get right in the 13 questions that I have in store for you guys, right? Let's start. Simple MCQs the play around because it's actually blah it's like super easy questions first question a spherical mirror and a thin spherical lens have each a focal length of minus 15 centimeter the mirror and lens are likely to be both concave both convex the mirror is concave and the lens is convex the mirror is convex but the lens is concave now you can take up to one minute to solve this question in your examination trust me guys you don't need one minute for this sprint takes time would be 30 seconds in your examination you should take less than that if you ask me 15 seconds you should be able to give the right answer because this this thing this one you should note in your fingertips very simple your time I'll, again if you need more time pause the video put down the answers but yeah i'll put down the answer i'll tell you the answer in three two one the answer is going to be guys both concave because in concave mirror also the focal length lies in front of the mirror so it's going to be negative and in the case of uh, you know in the case of convex uh, sorry concave lens as well the focal length is going to be on the same side as are the object so for both of them it'll be negative so the answer is option number b Super easy question, right? Like I told you, black. Second question. Here's another one. Again, one minute in your examinations, less than 30 seconds over here. Let's go ahead and look at this question. Which of the following lenses would you prefer to use while reading small letters found in a dictionary? Would you prefer a convex lens of focal length 50 centimeters? Would you prefer a convex lens of focal length 50 centimeters? Concave lens, sorry. Would you prefer a con convex lens of focal length 5 centimeters? Or would you prefer a concave lens of focal length 5 centimeters? What an amazing question. What an amazing question. Trust me, 30 seconds, that is all it takes. You don't have to show any calculation stuff. If you just know the type of image that is formed, or that itself is more than enough. You can aramsi answer the question without any calculation. I'll tell you the answer in, again, put on the answer in the chat box, put on the answer in the comment section if you have to. But yes, the answer in three, two, one, the answer is definitely gonna be convex lens of focal length five centimeter. Let me tell you why. Because guys, in the case of a, you know, a reading lens or a magnifying lens, your image has to be erect. It has to be enlarged. And it also has to be 
you know you, you can say that it's also a, you know okay it is not necessary that it has to be real or virtual but yes because it's erect it also has to be virtual as well right so you have you need an erect enlarged and virtual image that is what you know you need like in your magnifying glass this is the type of image that you get now the magnifying glass uses a convex lens that is that though is pakka because in concave though always you're gonna get weight that is virtual erect and diminished image so you cannot use that you want a magnified image right to reach smaller image you need to make it bigger you need to magnify it so you can you should be using a convex lens so option a and options b and d are already removed cannot be concave at all now the question is between 50 centimeters or 5 centimeters now when do you get image to be erect enlarged and virtual in the case of convex lens when the object is placed between what between the optical center and focus between the optical center and f1 that is when the image is going to be uh, you know, enlarge. That is when the image is going to be enlarged. So, in order for you to keep the object between optical center and the focus, you need to have a smaller focal length. Because if you have a bigger focal length, then you'll have to keep it, you know, uh, what to say, you'll, you'll have to, uh, what to say, you, you will have to keep it according to that. You have to keep it, you know, pretty far away. But because the focal length is just 5 centimeters, if you just keep it close enough, because generally you would like to, you know, you would keep the uh, convex lens a little bit more closer, right? So because you keep it a little bit more closer, you can use a convex lens of 5 centimeters focal length. That's all. All right, 50 would be a little bit more bigger, right? It'll, it'll still give you an, you know, uh, what to say, and and uh, what to say, you'll you'll still be getting an uh, enlarged, erect, and diminished image. But five centimeters is more than enough. You don't need to go with 50 centimeters. You just need a smaller focal length. Right. Third question, guys. Very easy question. Here it is. Light rays A and B fall an optical component fall on an optical component X and come out as C and D. The optical component is a what? I'm hoping that you guys have seen the picture, guys. I'm going to come back again, like Jadu. Is it concave lens, is it a convex lens, is it a rectangular glass lab, or is it a prism? Super easy question. I'll give you the answer in three seconds. 30 seconds is what you get, guys. That's all. In three, two, one, pause the video if you have to uh, to give the right answer. But the answer is definitely going to be a concave lens. Why? Because you can see that the ray of light are diverging away from each other. And a concave lens is the one which is diverging in nature because it's parallel to the principal axis. So it's definitely going to be concave in nature. Super easy question. Again, black. That's why I named it as a blare out. Right? Do this. I, I hope you guys are agreeing with that, right? That's a black question. All right, the fourth question, guys. Again, 30 seconds is what you get. Sprint text time. One minute in your examination. The question is, when an object is placed on the focal point in front of a convex lens, the image produces, if an object is placed exactly the focal point of a convex lens, where is the image going to be formed? Is it, The image produced is real reduced and inverted, real enlarged and inverted, real true and inverted, or there is no image at all. If the object is placed at the focus of a convex lens, the type of image formed is what? If you know your ray diagrams, guys, you don't even need 30 seconds for this. You don't even need 30 seconds for this one. Trust me on that. All right. Anyways, I'll keep the question. I'll start the question in three, two, one. Sorry, I'll give you the answer in option number B, guys. It's definitely going to be real enlarged and inverted. It's going to be highly enlarged, in fact. It's going to be a highly enlarged image because when the object is placed at focus, the image is going to be formed at infinity. Right, we already know that from the ray diagrams we know that if the object is placed at the focus image is going to be formed at infinity and hence it's going to be real highly enlarged and inverted in nature super easy question moving on to the next one guys i hope that let me know in the comment section or let me know in the chat box how many phase have gotten all four questions correct till now how many questions have you gotten right let me know in the chat box in the chat box, comment section, wherever it is, just spam it. Let me know how many questions you've gotten right. All right. It's very important that you keep a check on yourself. Wherever you're going wrong, go back to your textbook, read those concepts one more time or watch the video on YouTube, but make it clear because I'm pretty sure if you've made the mistake over here, you'll repeat it in your exams if you don't correct it. Right. Only a fool would repeat its mistakes. Only a fool would repeat his mistake. And I'm sure you guys are all very smart. So correct those mistakes so you don't have to, you know, regret it later when it comes to your board exams. Right. Fifth question, guys. Fifth question. Here it is. When an object is placed between the focal point and the convex lens or oh, and the convex lens. All right. So focal point and the convex lens, the image produces <coughs> real reduced and inverted, real enlarged and inverted, virtual enlarged and upright or virtual reduced and upright. What are the Super easy question, guys. Again, 30 seconds, 
come on guys 10 seconds if you know your ray diagrams 10 seconds aaram so you can give the answer the question is this if an object is placed between focal point and the optical center of a convex lens where is the what is the type of image formed real and reduced inverted real enlarged inverted virtual enlarged and upright or virtual reduced and upright super easy question in 3 2 1 come on da put it on the chat box come on guys spam the answer i know you know the answer the answer is definitely going to be option number c because if an object is placed between if between the focus and optical center the image is going to be v that is virtual erect and enlarged virtual upright is nothing but erect and enlarged super easy question right i mean in fact the magnifying glass also works on the same principle the first question that we asked i think the second question that we asked was pretty much the same as this one super easy question all right sixth question guys again one ma one minute in your examinations 30 second sprint time let's go a real image is produced by virtual rays and can be projected on a screen is produced by a real ray by real rays and cannot be projected on a screen is produced by virtual images and cannot be produced on a screen or produced by real rays and can be projected on a screen i mean the the options are so massively big but if you know your concepts you don't even have to read the options if you know your concepts if you know the difference between real and virtual image you won't even have to read the options you can directly give the answer that's how straight forward this question is very very straight forward very simple question i'll give you the answer in 3 seconds but let me know in the chat box if you need more time pause the video give the answer but i'll give you the answer in 3 and two and one come on come on people i know you know the answer very simple yeah all right the answer is option number four guys it's definitely going to be option number four it's definitely going to be formed by real images and it's it can be projected on a screen because real images are those which can be caught on a screen virtual images are those which cannot be caught on a screen and for real images to be formed you need real rays of light you cannot have virtual rays of light in order to form a real image right so option number d would be the right answer for this question and that is the end of section a that's it let me know once again out of six questions how many questions did you get right how many questions did you manage to give the right answer for let me know in the chat box all right in the meantime let's go on to section b again the section b would be having some diagram based questions lot of numericals and assertion reasoning type question as well now here guys i'm going to call this round as the very sweaty round because it is actually going to be sweaty trust me when i say this i am not exaggerating you will understand it so i'm hoping that you guys are mentally and physically braced for this question because it is going to be kind of tricky there are few questions which are kind of tricky so be sure to answer every question because again the same question might appear in your boards at that time don't regret that oh i should have watched the video until the end and then i would have given the right answer all right so with that said people let's go on to the seventh question now this question is a new it's a very simple numerical 2 to 3 minutes in your board exams 2 minutes sprint text time the question is this an object is situated at a distance of f by 2 from a convex lens and a focal length f the distance of the image would be what plus f by 2 plus f by 3 plus f by 4 or minus f let's go ahead and try to do this question is very simple question again an object is situated at a distance of f by 2 so u is given as minus f by 2 focal length is f now it's a convex lens so focal length would be positive now the formula is 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f i'm going to use a different color so that you guys can see it clearly so here we go guys so 1 by v Minus of minus because object distance is always negative, right? Minus f by two is equal to one by f. Take this to the numerator and minus into minus becomes plus. So I can write this one by v plus two by f is equal to one by f because this this one by f by two can be written as two by f. Simple. I'm taking two to the numerator, so it'll be two by f. Simple. Now take this two to the other side. What will happen to this one? So the equation will become one by v is equal to one by f. Minus two by f, the numerator is f, so you don't have to do anything about it. So you write it as minus one by f. So what will be f? That is v. So what is v equal to? Minus f. Simple. 
very very simple question let me know in the chat box how many faces were able to give the right answer I, when i told you it is sweaty i meant it when i said I, I, it is going to be sweaty so how okay is the answer for this question is going to be option number d it's going to be minus f the of image distance let me know in the chat box all right how many faces were able to give the right answer let me know in the chat box immediately was in this question something that was i know again generally you get values but this one is very uh, you know kind of like a weird kind of question that you have but uh, how are the answers going to be minus f uh, would be the answer all right moving on to the next question eighth question again a super duper numerical now this one is very straightforward as the typical numerical that you get if an object of 7 cm height is placed at a distance of 12 cm from a convex lens of focal length 8 cm find the position nature and height of the image now you can guys 2 minutes we'll try to do it in 2 minutes but if you need more time pause the video and try to do this question right pause the video try to do this question options are minus 24 cm virtual and erect 14 cm uh 12 cm real and inverted 7 cm 24 cm real and inverted 14 cm is the height of the image minus 20 12 cm is the image distance virtual and erect 7 cm so let's try to do this question guys let's try to do this right so object height is given as height of the object is given as 7 cm awesome the object is placed at a distance of 12 cm right so u is minus 12 cm focal length is 8 cm plus 8 right because uh, it's a convex lens so it has to be positive now first thing guys find out the image distance 1 by v minus of 1 by minus 12 is equal to 1 by 8 minus into minus becomes plus so 1 by v is equal to 1 by 8 minus 1 by 12 minus into minus becomes plus when i take it to the other side again it becomes minus right find out the lcm over here i think uh, we can go with uh, uh 24 uh 8 3 is a 24 right and 12 2 is a 24 so that's going to be 3 minus 2 divided by 24 that is 1 by v so what is v equal to then v is equal to 24 cm plus 24 cm very simple now the answer doesn't end there you also have to find out the nature and the height of the image as well now this 24 cm means it is basically a real image why because it is plus 24 no that means the image is from behind and real images are always inverted in nature so this is going to be real and inverted but is it going to be magnified or enlarged magnified or uh, you know is it going to be diminished that is also something we have to figure out so how do you do that again we know that m is equal to h i by h o which is which is also equal to v by u so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take h i by h o is equal to v by u I want to take this because we know that height of the image divided by height of the object is equal to object image height divided by image distance by object distance. Put on the values over here. Height of the image is what you're supposed to find out. Height of the object is seven. Image distance is twenty-four centimeters. Object distance is minus twelve. So minus twelve that will be minus two. To seven into four is uh, sorry seven into two is what minus fourteen centimeter. This minus means that it is going to be inverted in nature. And if you look at the size of the object, it is seven centimeter. Height of the image is minus fourteen centimeter. So it means that the image is real, inverted, and enlarged. Simple. So the option should be option number C. Twenty-four centimeters real and inverted. Fourteen centimeters would be the height of the object. super easy. height of the image right super easy question i think it took a little bit more than 2 minutes because again i have to explain and answer that is the reason for it but don't so don't don't start uh, throwing rotten tomatoes at all it's just that i have to explain and then answer is then put on the answer as well so make sure that you guys are able to do the question in 2 to 3 minutes not more than that ideally definitely not more than that because again guys you only get 90 minutes in your examinations and you have to use it very wisely right because you don't have just physics you have Uh, you know chemistry and biology as well so you have to use your time very wisely and uh, you know utilize time properly and uh, manage it really really well so anyways the answer to this question would be option number c moving on to the most toughest question that you're going to face in today's session by far the toughest question that you're going to have question number 9 is this the filament of a lamp is 80 cm from a screen and a converging lens forms an image of it on a screen magnified 3 times find the distance of the lens from the filament and the focal length of the lens options are u is equal to minus 20 cm v is equal to 60 cm f is equal to 15 cm u is equal to minus 10 cm v is equal to minus 30 cm f is equal to 15 cm u is minus 20 v is 30 f is 30 u is minus 10 v is 60 and f is equal to 15 cm 2 to 3 minutes It's going to take a little bit longer than that trust me but yes I want you guys to let me know in the chat box 
if you guys were able to give the right answer for this i want everyone to give me the answer in the comment section as well if you guys were able to give the right answer for this in the chat box and the comment section all right i don't want anyone to copy this i don't want anyone to go and copy this google it no i want you to try it by yourself so what is given to you even though the question looks very scary trust me the steps are very very simple let me tell you why the filament of the lamp is 80 cm from the lens from the screen and the converging lens all right so that means that your object distance u plus image distance is equal to 80 cm it is see 80 cm total distance the screen the lens and the object together between the object and the you know the screen and the you know the lens in between everything together is 80 centimeter now the if this is the lens the distance the screen is going to be behind because it's a real image right that is why you're able to capture it on a screen so that means that this will be v this distance so again i'll just draw it it's better this way so this is your convex lens this will be a screen this will be your object this total distance from the screen to the object that is 80 centimeter so this is v and this is minus u so minus u plus v is equal to 80 centimeter now this is where majority of years will go wrong this is where majority of years this statement is what where you know majority go can go confused but if you are able to figure out this one statement no the rest of the question is jujubi when i say jujubi i mean jujubi like laddutva saval that's that's exactly what this is all right now you know the you know you found out this one they're telling that the magnification is three times and it is forming an image on the screen that means the real image so magnification is minus three because again it's a real image no? so it has to be inverted as well so this is going to be minus three awesome now people first thing first find out uh, what is m m is equal to v by u so from here i can say that minus three is equal to v by u so i'm going to find out the value for v here so what is v equal to minus three u now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this value in this equation. I'm going to substitute this value in this equation. So I have minus u plus v is equal to 80. This can be written as minus u minus 3u is equal to 80. So that's what minus 4u is equal to 80. So use what 80 divided by 4, which is nothing but 20 minus 20 centimeter. Object distance done object distance is minus 20 centimeters so it has to be option number a or b all right now next step now that you know the object distance substitute the value in this equation again i'm going to call this equation number one right substitute that in the equ first equation again find out the value for v because again minus v plus u is equal to 80 minus this is going to be what uh, 20 minus of minus 20 right minus of minus 20 plus v is equal to 80 so what is v equal to then uh, this will be plus when it goes to the other side it will become minus so 80 minus 20 that will be 60 centimeters minus into minus becomes plus so plus 20 when it goes to the other side become minus 80 minus 20 60 so the answer is going to be 60 centimeters so yes option number a that's it now to find the focal length that's it let's do the focal the question is not done yet no let's do the find out the focal length it's very simple use your lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f uh, 1 by minus by 1 by 60 minus of minus 1 by uh, minus 20 is equal to 1 by f so this is what plus so into 3 into 3 so that's 1 plus 3 divided by 60 is equal to 1 by f so what is f is equal to 60 by 4 what is 60 by 4 uh, 2 2 to 30 to 15 so the answer is going to be 15 centimeter that's it the answer is going to be option by minus 20 centimeters v is equal to 60 centimeters and f is equal to 15 centimeters how awesome is this question how awesome is this question let me know in the chat box let me know in the chat box how many of you guys were able to give all nine questions correctly so far or all, all nine questions correctly or how many questions have you given right let me know in the chat box in the in the comment section also let me know how to nine questions how many how many questions were you able to give the right answer for super amazing job guys well done for all those who got the right answer hats off that is really good thinking if you did not get it right it's okay now you know how to do it if you are ever asked this question in your board exams now you know how to solve it moving on to the 10th question very simple assertion reasoning type question here it is guys two minutes 
in sprint takes two to three minutes in your exam. Assertion is if the rays are diverging after emerging from a lens, the lens must be concave. Reason is the convex lens can give diverging rays. Options are both assertion and reason are true. Reason is the correct explanation for assertion. Both assertion and reason are true, but reason is not the correct explanation for assertion. Assertion is true, but reason is false, or assertion is false, but reason is true. What do you guys think? Very, very simple question, guys. Trust me, a lot of A's would have gone with option number B. I am pretty sure a lot of A's would have gone with option number B. Unfortunately, that is not the right answer. The answer would be option number D. Let me tell you why. Because if the object is kept between F1 and O, in the case of a convex lens, the rays will still be diverging. So you cannot say that all diverging rays are coming out of convex lens, sorry, concave lens. It can come from convex lens also if the object is placed between F1 and O. And yes, reason is true because convex lens also can form diverging mirrors, sorry, diverging rays, but assertion is not. So that would, be, that would be the answer, guys. The answer is option number D. Simple. Now, if you guys have been enjoying the session so far, do not forget to like, hit the like button, guys. Make sure you tell me out of these 10 questions, how many, how many questions were you able to give it right in the chat box as well. Before we go to the 11th question, I have something super exciting to tell you guys. Now, you know your term one is coming. Now, your preparations or your level of preparation is mat is going to matter a lot because you still have like about one one and a half month before your science exam but you cannot just sit there and wait for the exams to approach because between the exams you'll not have much time right after sst you'll have i think two days for your uh you know for your science exam so you cannot expect to prepare between the exams so whatever preparation has to be done it has to be done now and not between the exams so keeping that in mind guys vedantu has come up with the term one examinations or the term one crash course now this term one crash course is going to be there until the end of your term one examination where you will be getting entire revision of all six subject sst social the same english computer sorry not computers i would say uh science all the three subjects of science physics chemistry biology and mathematics all six subjects complete revision and complete syllabus would be completed by the start of your term one examination and that is an amazing opportunity for all those people who are looking for a way to prepare for your exam or if you've already prepared and you want a revision plan whatever category you fall in it doesn't matter vedantu's classes will definitely help you guys a lot so this term one crash course is what you have to do guys so what you will do is click on this once you go to the description you'll have an option called a cbc term one crash course just click on this link and this link will directly take you to the vedantu's website so you can see for yourself over here entire school exam preparations revision course grade one term that is your term one crash course and your micro courses for each and every topic everything would be covered in this uh you know in the next two to three months now the plan guys is going to be like this you have two sets of plans you have one is the vedantu light and the other is vedantu classic now vedantu light will have every basic feature that you guys love about vedantu that is your uh you know your you'll have uh you know you, you can find out the entire replay session so if you go to the vedantu website once you log in you can check out all of your past sessions all of your upcoming sessions also you can see whichever sessions are going to be coming up uh, in the days ahead you can check out all the past sessions as well and once you click on replay you can watch the entire replay of the session it's going to be like this you can watch the entire replay of the session and more importantly each of the sessions would have quizzes which would help you to prepare for your term one examination so every day in fact vedanta is one of the only institutions that has been preparing for term one probably since the start of the year probably from past two or three years until we've been preparing for this because every session will have quizzes and these quizzes are phenomenally well prepared if with respect to your term one preparations with, with respect to your term one these quizzes are have also been designed and you can also get an opportunity to talk to the teacher as well you can unmute yourself you see this you can the teacher can actually talk to you because that is not a feature that is there on youtube right because i know that a lot of your comments get missed out a lot of your requests a lot of your doubts get missed out on youtube but that does not happen over here because here you can get your doubts cleared by talking to the teacher by even uncamming as well so i can i can actually see you through webcam it'll be like a you know like a conference call and we can get our doubts solved right there and then 
with the people you can also get the fast after every session after every question you'll have a fastest fingers list so you can see how fast you have answered that particular question and with those fastest fingers list you'll also have leaderboards as well so you'll have entire leaderboards available for you guys to see you know how well you have per you know performed uh, when you compare to the entire uh, entire class you can see the entire leaderboard you can see stars over here you can see how many questions you have given right out of the number of questions that were asked every single detail is available over here and more more importantly i think this is where we uh, take a lot of pride in in that particular session that i'm that i'm showing you right now there were about 200 questions asked 200 doubts were asked by the students in that class and look at that number all of those 200 doubts have been solved inside the class within that one hour duration and that's exactly what happens in every single session every session whatever doubts you have will be solved by not only one teacher not only the master teacher but with the master teacher if you look at the replay you'll have an option called as doubts if you just you know check over here you'll have an option called as doubts so if you click on this doubts right you'll also have another set of teachers called as a class teachers who will be there in the back of the you know back end to help you clear every doubt of yours so all of your doubts will be cleared inside the class without having to go you know go out for outside counsel and more importantly you can even download the notes of every session and i know how important notes are it's like gold at this point of time for you guys notes are very very important so you can download the entire notes of all the sessions and you can read refer it whenever wherever you want all of this for a very 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 nominal cost of just Two thousand seven hundred rupees. The entire term one crash course, full revision, micro course, everything included for just two thousand seven hundred rupees. How awesome is that? Where would you get such an opportunity? Trust me, guys. There's nowhere you'll be getting it for such a low, low cost. Because two thousand seven hundred rupees, like again, it's like two, three pizzas. That's all it is. But for your entire term one crash course. All right, and Vedanta Classic is that you'll also have the doubt app as well. You can download the Vedanta's app and get your doubts solved over there. That will be three thousand one fifty rupees. That means about three hundred, four hundred, four fifty rupees more than your light. But yeah, you can also have an opportunity to get your doubts solved at any point in time you want. Seats are filling up really, really fast, guys. You have a very, very golden opportunity with you guys over here. make sure you grab it so that you don't regret it later on later on you should not feel like i should have done it unfortunately you know i did not want to do it at that time do not have that regret because there's nothing worse than having a feeling of regret right guys so these are the dates that your exam this is the this is the term one batch guys one batch is already start from 11th of october there will be another batch that'll be starting soon so if you have all if you have not enrolled yet make sure you join very quickly so that you can you don't miss out on more sessions and whatever sessions is already happened you'll be getting the recordings of that as well so you don't miss out on anything at all moving on guys let's go to section number c now the case study based question again this is that's all a uh, round that's the south indian version that's all uh. that's exactly what this is because this is probably one of the most easiest round you're going to get the case study based questions because see the case study based questions are very very simple guys but this one is going to be a little bit more i mean it's not that simple that you're like okay sir i'm going to chill out no no make sure you solve these questions also let me know in the comment section how many questions we able to give it right so here's the question a student performs an experiment with a convex lens and he marks the table between image distance v and object distance u on the basis of the table given the uh, answer the following so you have to figure out what is the uh, what are the there'll be set of questions asked based on this table right now you have to figure out which of them is correct uh, object distance is minus 90 cm image distance is plus 18 minus 60 plus 20 minus 30 plus 30 minus 20 minus plus 60 minus 18 or plus 6 plus 90 and minus 10 plus 100 all right here's the first question Two to three minutes in your examinations. Two minutes. I'll tell you what you can do it in fifteen seconds. Forget two minutes. Fifteen seconds, you're done. The question is this: What is the focal length of this convex lens? Options are minus fifteen, plus twenty-five, minus twenty-five, or plus fifteen. First of all, it's a convex lens, so it has to be plus. It cannot be minus. It cannot be minus fifteen, or it cannot be minus twenty-five. Now the options are plus twenty-five or plus fifteen. Now look at the di. Look at this table, guys. The object distance when it's a thirty, image distance is thirty. When does this happen? When the object is placed at two f one. 
when the object is play, placed at 2f1 that is when the image is going to be formed at 2f2 if the object is placed at 2f1 then what will be f1 guys what will be f1 f1 will be 15 centimeters half of that simple 30 divided by 2 15 centimeters so the answer is definitely going to be plus 15 centimeters definitely not plus 25 it's going to be plus 15 centimeters very simple 30 seconds that's all if you know your ray diagrams you're good to go if you know your ray diagrams you're good to go if you do not know your ray diagrams and you don't you want to learn about it go back to the video guys we have the, the entire prodigies series is dedicated to you guys it is dedicated to you bunch so go go back check out that video of sign convention of how to figure out the ray diagrams check it out let me know in the comment section if you guys have understood it or not all right second question in the table which observation is wrong one four three or six which of this is wrong look at this one guys look at the table again one is minus 90 centimeter you see minus 90 is like when the object is placed between infinity and 2f1 or beyond 2f1 so when the object is placed beyond 2f1 image has to be formed between f1 and o or between the uh, between the optical center and or uh, no not okay sorry between f f1 and 2f1 right between f1 and 2f1 so image is going to be around uh ob see focal length is 15 centimeters so 2f1 would be 30 so it has to be between 15 to 30 so yeah that makes sense it cannot be option it cannot be four also it cannot be what are the other options three also it cannot be three as well because if you look at this three is also correct it cannot be four also because when the object is placed uh you know between uh, uh 2f1 and f1 the image is going to be formed beyond 2f2 so yes this is also correct the only thing that is wrong is the sixth one because here it is minus 10 centimeter that means that the object is placed between f1 and o and if the object is placed between f1 and o the image is going to be formed on the same side as that of the object. So it cannot be plus 100. It cannot be plus 100. Why? Because the object is placed between F1 and O. And if the object is placed between F1 and O, image will be formed on the same side as that of the object. No, it will not be formed on the other side. So it cannot be plus. So the answer would be option number D. That's it. Super easy, no? Last question, guys. Now, let me know out of 12 questions so far. This is the 13th question. Let me know out of these 13 questions in the chat box, in the comment section, how many were you able to give the right answer? How many did you manage to give the right answer for? Alright, the last question is, if a convex lens is used to focus sunlight on a paper, where the paper should be placed so that it catches fire? I mean, come on, a bacha level question. If a convex lens is used to focus sunlight on paper, where should you paper, place the paper in order to make it catch fire? 25 centimeters away from the lens, at optical center of the lens, at principal focus or at the center of curvature. Two minutes for this one. Go on. Are it is going to be option number C. No doubt, guys. I'm hoping that you've already given the right answer. If you need more time, pause the video and write, tie out every single question. Let me know in the comment section how many of you guys were able to give all 13 questions right or how many questions did you manage to give the right answer for. Let me know that in the comment section and in the chat box. All right. So that's it, guys. That is all for today. But yeah, don't leave it. I also have a homework question. This is a homework question. If two lenses of power, two di diopter and three diopter are kept in contact with each other, the focal length of the combinations would be what? If two lenses of power, two diopter and three diopter are kept in contact with each other, then the focal length of this combination would be what? Let me know in the comment section, guys. What do you think would be the right answer for this? And all the people who give the give down the answer for the homework and you manage to tell me how many questions you have given the right answer for, I'll be putting up your names in the next session, next Sprint Tech series I'll be coming out. So make sure you guys do that as well. All right, that's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for joining. Next session is going to be on 28th of October. I'll see you then. Until then, check out the crash course. It's right there for you guys waiting. It is ripe. Go grab that opportunity and make it yours. Make so that you don't have to regret it later. All right, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. And if you feel like these videos are helpful, share it with your friends as well. And let them also know what, uh, you know, what it looks like from our perspective. That's it, guys. Thank you for joining. Catch you guys in the next session. Take care of yourselves. Peace out. Stay safe. And all the best. Take care. Bye-bye.